So we're back for Galaxy Fold talk because that's kind of, I mean, that's what people care about right now. It's, it's the hot topic for good reasons and bad reasons. Joined today by John Rettinger, which is kind of amazing. Yesterday, we had Dave Lee. I mean, this place, it's like the tech all-stars in here. This is like the invitations go out and we just have to just pick our number and uh, come to studios. It's kind of amazing, actually. It's really, I, I'm, I'm happy about it because it allows for these types of discussions to take place. We've got so much to talk about. And so for much. us to have these uh, alternative viewpoints in this type of uh, format, which isn't, which isn't typical in the space right now. But... The thing about the Galaxy Fold is it's got attention for good reasons, bad reasons. You're one of the few people on the planet that's been using one for a little while, myself included. But, of course, we're having to uh, interpret these stories that are coming out. Oh, man, they are coming out fast and all of a sudden. And so yesterday, I'm doing this video with, uh, with Dave Lee, mm -hmm. and this story breaks. The broken Galaxy Fold story breaks. And we're, we're left to try to interpret it in real time. Now we've had a little bit more time mm -hmm. to take a peek at it. So it turns out that the majority of the breakages were a consequence of the removal of this screen protector-like material on the inside of the unfolded display. Yeah. And the whole screen feels like a screen protector. I mean, if you put one on your glass phone, like that's what it, that's what it feels like mm -hmm. um, on it. It's like... At what point is Samsung responsible for consumer negligence? Like, that's, like, that's the big question, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, you shouldn't, obviously you shouldn't do that, but they probably also should, like, let you know, like, hey, like, definitely, de definitely don't do that. So I looked into that particular piece a little bit more, and it turns out that the review units that went out did not have the warning. I, I went back, looked at the tweets. Oh, there it is. Marquez never had the warning. And he actually rewatched my unboxing video. I didn't have the warning. So it could be a review unit versus retail thing because this particular image here, it came from a T-Mobile employee. So I believe this was a retail unit. I think the warning will be with the retail units. Unfortunately, it wasn't with the review units. Nonetheless, it happened. Nonetheless, it, this is a thing. This is a thing now. This is the reality we're living in. The most exciting tech product, as far as you're concerned, I'm concerned, in the recent memory here, is met with controversy. And it's not the stories of the peeling screen that are most interesting to me. Nope. It's this one right here. Look at that. Claygate. Claygate 2019. This is the one story that people are pointing to because, yes, in the comments section of the fold breakage videos, you see people saying, just like you did, negligence, why would you remove that? These people are crazy. Tech reviewers don't know what they're, they're... Well, of course, those people are overreacting as well. Honest mistake, removing the thing. But this one is different. You see, this one here, we're, we're left kind of to imagine what might have occurred to create this bulge, this bump inside of the Galaxy Fold that The Verge was using, reviewing, uh, we're talking about Dieter's Galaxy Fold mm -hmm. because, I don't know, this might have been the original story. The, the, the story broke around this particular one right here. I looked at this image in the last one. I just assumed it was a piece of dust, sure. uh, 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 a small pebble. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know what it was. But, of course, we come to find out upon further inspection, reading through the article, <laughs> that it's actually something else. Yeah. Possibly something else. Could be some nefarious clay. You can't trust Clay's motivation, <laughs> I think, I think is, is the moral here. So when you look at the article here, what do they say, okay? Maybe you want to read that piece right there. Read that part. All right. So it's so a quick question, though. Yeah. If it is a pebble, like how often do you have pebbles in your pocket? Yeah. Like would you put putting rocks in your pocket? I mean, maybe a fragment of lint? Yeah. Dust? I guess. So we did stick a tiny piece of molding clay on the back of the phone yesterday to prop it up. I can't read that. Prop it up for a video shoot. It was something we typically do. Okay, so, so, we're on The Verge's website here, all right? And this is buried in the article. I mean, obviously, you, all you have to do is read it. It's right there. But I feel like a lot of people may have missed this. I missed it myself upon mm -hmm. uh, you know, first being introduced to the Twitter moment of the, the catastrophe, the controversy breaking. I didn't see this part. So I was just kind of like, oh, man, it's another busted fold. He didn't remove the, the protective cover. So now I'm actually worried, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of where I went with it. 
Then upon further inspection, seeing this piece right here, I was like, clay? We, we put molding clay on the back of the phone. And this is where you come in. Yeah. This is where things get, get crazy. This is why mm. I said we have to shoot right now because you are an expert on molding clay mm. in the tech community. I have no experience it's with molding clay. It's inside baseball. Okay, let's All hear right. what you got. So if you watch like YouTube videos, like phones don't stand up on their own, right? Like they've, they fall, they flop. They're not going to do it. So what people do... And what The Verge does, and I know it's because one of our guys that worked with us came from The Verge, and he brought clay with him. <laughs> the clay came from New York. So usually, <laughs> so what you do is you take like a big battery or something, you put some molding clay on it, you hold the phone up, stick it to it, and then you can go shoot your beauty shots, your B-roll, whatever you're going to do, and it works. But when you pull it off, there's residue on the back. So the, the fold is unique, obviously. It folds, but that, that hinge is open. There are gaps all along both sides of it. And when you have it kind of halfway open, there's like a pretty visible, like you can see that stuff could get in there. So if they had clay on that hinge and then opened it up, it would be right underneath. And you could see how it could make its way to the front. Yeah, so essentially, this is a, this is a type of activity that a typical, a typical user would not engage in. No. This is a, this is a, this is a tech community unknown Kind of, I mean, for me, even for me, it was unknown because mm -hmm. I've never, you know, done that type of shot in the yeah. past. It, but as you, as you're saying, it's it's it's, it's common. A, it's a commonplace activity around beauty shots, B roll. When you see the device standing or sitting a certain way, then that material could be utilized. Now, you said in your personal experience, when you were using it for certain shots for your videos, mm -hmm. you noticed that the residue stuck around. It sticks. It absolutely does. You so, got to do a little like dabby afterwards to make sure you get it all off. The clay, it sits on the back of the phone. It stays there, nefariously plotting its way to do bad things. Now, we also know that this is a very complex hinge mechanism. Yes. When, when you look at the, the video or the GIF or whatever Samsung is circulating about how this particular hinge operates, it is complicated, sophisticated. Mm -hmm. There are gears and cogs and... A million pieces, maybe not a million, but there's a lot of moving parts inside of this hinge. And you can imagine that if some clay was placed on the hinge piece itself, and this thing was then snapped like that, right there. You see? See that? That's how it would happen. It was satisfyingly snapped. It might make its way into those cogs that Will is showing us on the display right there, possibly creating the catastrophe that was experienced by Dieter at the verge it's a possibility it is a possibility and they put it he put it in his article so it goes to show you that uh even he and the video crew and so forth that even they thought that might have been what caused the issue now because we can't say for certain i mean you've given us great insight though thank you on, on the whole clay scenario that's why i'm here I'm, I'm i'm your clay i will be your go-to clay expert i'm so happy from about here it. on out when i heard you say oh the clay thing yeah i know about the clay thing i was like oh really because it's not something that ever i've ever processed before but nevertheless we got to get to we, we have to determine at this point whether or not the number of cases we've seen the types yeah. of problems we've seen we saw the removal of the screen protector. We saw this version of it here. Uh, and then I think there's one more busted one out there mm -hmm. and obviously a very small sample size. What we're left with is like you said when the video started. Are we to blame negligence here or are we to blame Samsung? Samsung. It's like that. That's, people aren't going to do, they're not going to stick clay on the back of their phone. But they might have something in their pocket, like a piece of lint, open it up, it gets stuck, and then, you know... You get Dieter boned, mm -hmm. and then that, and I, I do give him. I want to give him credit for the, for saying that for saying part. that. Yeah, because that could have been like I don't know, Samsung. This is your problem. Yeah. So I, I do want to give him and the Verge credit for saying, like, listen, this is something it could be. Yeah. And I'm sure Samsung will take that phone apart and find out what was in there. That's a happened. great point. And if you're Samsung, you go in there, you crack it open, you look for clay. Yeah. Do you come out? Do you publicize? Do you say like, listen? Don't you get to put a new label? <laughs> Imagine the packaging on new manufacturing units like do not peel off screen protector and don't stick clay in the back of your phones. So no clay zone. See, like you know, you see these signs at the airport and they're like, you know, that the toilet's not for like throwing your wallet in. You're like, at some point, like something someone had to throw something in the toilet to put that sign up. Yeah. Like, don't spill hot coffee on yourself. Like somebody, you know, somebody does that. 
Mm. Like, are you going to need just warning labels after warning labels? And at what point do people not stop reading them? Yeah. And they start peeling the stuff off anyway. Yeah. It gets crazy. You're right about that. So here's my point of view. Here's my perspective on it. Uh, it's either way you slice it, it's still not good. I think it's an important piece of the discussion. The more information mm-hmm. we have, the better. The more information the potential customers have, the, 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 the better the decision that they yeah. can make. I'm glad as well, like you said, that The Verge put this piece out, that they mentioned the clay portion and Absolutely. that the other reviewers who removed what looked like a screen protector but wasn't, that they all revealed that component, mm-hmm. that piece as well. That's just loading up the average uh, customer, the public, with as much information as possible so they can decide going forward if this particular device is worth the risk associated with it, whether it's clay or some other material, I'm fairly confident that some substance on this hinge component could possibly work its way into the device. And this comes back to a discussion you and I had mm-hmm. earlier about the treatment of this device yeah, being, being different than your typical smartphone. Maybe you have to baby it. Maybe the type of buyer that picks this thing up is going to treat it differently just because of the cost associated with it. Moving parts in general, uh, they're more fragile. Yeah. And if you go out of your way to purchase one of these devices, it's helpful to know in the early stages, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be as durable as a typical solid state smartphone. Yeah. And that's a good point. I think anybody who's spending $2,000 for a phone, it's not the subset of people that are getting a new phone every three years and saving for it. I'm not sure people that are, have two grand to drop on a phone are going to care at all about this. And like, that's another reason that this is super unique. These make for great headlines, mm. you know, but yikes, and everybody wants to see what's going on. I don't think anybody who's buying this is going to care. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'll put a case on it, they'll be extra careful, they'll be ginger on it, protect your $2,000, but like, this phone is a really unique a really unique case and a really yeah. unique buyer for it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I saw, I saw Casey Neistat. He bought a new pouch. I he, saw that fanny pack. The fanny pack. He's he's not even going to pocket this thing. He dropped it, right? I guess yeah. he, maybe, or he was worried about it. It it is slippery. It's glass. You know how pockets are these days. It could slide mm-hmm. out. So who knows? There could be a whole new line of holsters or clothing or you can, a whole new mm-hmm. accessory line. Listen. It might, it might be more durable than we think, too. So I was in New York last week, and I, I, so I filmed a video with Sarah Dietschy. And she had, she had just gotten her fold, and we were playing with it, and then she dropped it. And it happened on camera. Dropped it on the floor, concrete floor. And it, you could see the it was all right. color go out of her face. It like, and she just had it. It was like 10 minutes old. They had just handed it to her. Dropped on the floor. She bent down. It's high drama here. Bent down. Picked up the phone. It's perfect. Wow. Perfect. But peel off the screen protector, your whole phone's blown. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, I just think anytime you're on version 1.0 in general of mm-hmm. anything, it's like it's a different attention that you have when you interact with it. It should yeah. be. It's just it's an understanding that like it's a is a cutting edge fringe kind of thing. Either way, I think the clay piece is an important piece to put out there. Sure. Uh, I think uh, I'm just I'm glad you brought it with you when you came along here because I think the people deserve to know all the details associated mm-hmm. with it. And I know I've been, you know, I checked out the comment section. People do care. They want to know like, wait, what, how exactly did this happen? They want to know the detail. It's there inside the Verge article that at least in this one case that keeps getting cited as the non-screen protector removal case, mm-hmm. there may have been some extracurricular activities yeah. as well. It doesn't uh, it doesn't justify the purchase of this mm-hmm. thing. It doesn't change what the product is or how fragile I think it is. But it's important to note that there might be, as is usually the case, there might be more to the story. Yeah. And if it's not clay, it could be something else that's in your pocket. So, like, what are you going to have to do? And the moral of the story is? To don't put clay in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.